This is uh, one of my patients that had trauma at birth. The upper right picture is the uh, primitive reflex, the adduction, the high tone. And let me tell you, when there is cortical damage, there's enzyme-related uh, dysfunction, mitochondrial disease. There's so many things that can affect our children when they're born and that we see. Uh, this child had high tone in the arms, the hands were brought to the chest, and the lower extremities, like I said, were adducted and high tone. She could not uncross those legs no matter what. And um, she did have trauma at birth. It was a very difficult vaginal birth. And this is the posture that you see this baby at six months old. What I did was I stimulated the baby all over. I worked with rotation with eyes. The eyes always rotate because guess what? It's a ball. So no matter where the eyes move, it's rolling and rotation. The body has to have rotation to actively move, start and stop movements. Remember PNF, it always starts with rotation. If you have a patient with Parkinson's disease, they lose rotation. They lose eye rotation, face, and everything else rotation. So they can't initiate walking or stop walking. They have to uh, fall forward and shuffle because they don't have rotation in their trunk for balance or their legs for stepping. And they have to touch a wall to stop. Well, many of our children look the same way, even though they have a different dysfunction. This child, after 60 minutes of treatment, her legs are now relaxed, abducted, they're in flexion, and this is what can happen with overstimulation of the uh, sensorium. It relocates tone because sensation will go all the way up. It goes more to the parietal lobe. And if you know legs are up at the top, you remember the little homoculus man? And uh, we also did proprioception to uh, knees and heels, even though I show you with my arm, I'm not gonna put my leg up here. And uh, we did a lot of rotation, eye rotation, neck, trunk, arm rotation. You roll it like it's a clay snake. You roll the legs like it's a clay snake. Then you do not strain the rotators. And this is what it looks like after one hour. So Karen, um, rotation for the eyes. So we know what the extremities, what does rotation for the eyes mean? You're having, you're uh, I have them. a visually track with sound. So you wire the eyes and the ears together and because one of them's gonna work better than the other one. You go up and down and near and far. So it's 3D, the eyes have to synchronize. You want the child to have stereoscopic vision for safety. And uh, that's, that's how we do the eyes. Great, and is this for you mostly in session or you're having the parents do that at home as well? How for both, you? both. And both. you know, I video a lot of the things for the parents. I just ask, please don't share this on social media because not every baby's the same. So if you wanna borrow that, it works well in my practice. But then the parents, I will video the parents doing this. So they go, well, I know I can do it because this is me doing it on my phone. Yeah, that's what, that's how I get that done. And that's daily, you would say, twice a day? Oh, yeah. yeah. Depends on yeah. the child. If they can do it more than once a day, the brain remembers whatever it does the most. And then uh, they're going to work that one to two years and sometimes less to get that integrated. If a child has a traumatic brain injury, CVA, uh, uh, aneurysm, they have really quick recovery and then it planes off just a little bit, but they can have recovery unlimited. So this works with all ages. And I, as I think I pointed out before, I treat from womb to tomb. I treat the whole lifespan. 